Jennifer. So today's topic is two topics in one. The first topic is knowledge is power and how do you know whether you are microblading only or a blade and shade client and secondly how do you prepare for the healing that happens after the treatment that you have with us so they kind of interlink a little bit and here are my top tips in relation to how to make it work for you so when our clients book in with us we send a full a information pack out to you and that is so that you have all the knowledge oftentimes people say oh my god there's so much information can you just condense it a bit no nope. uh you need to know everything um it is it is a tattoo on your face. It's very, it's serious business. It is not something that's trivial. It's not like a tint that you can wash off. It's there and it's there for all prosperity. So whether you book in for a consultation, we go through all of the details with you. Um, and we are, or if you book in for a step one microblading, the consultation is part of that, um, of that treatment. So either way, there is a consultation happens. Um, and we consult with you and here are the prudent questions that we ask you so part of your prep before you arrive to us at all is that we advise that you wear your regular products that you like to wear on a daily basis and we also ask you to bring your powders and pencils with you the ones that you use every single day and one of the questions that I ask all of my clients when they arrive is what look are you hoping to achieve that gives me a good idea as to what road we go down for that particular client if it so happens that the client says, oh, I'm so natural and I want a really natural look, well, then already I know that this is a microblade only client. If the client says, oh, my God, I never leave my house without my eyebrows done. They're usually the client that is a blade and shade client. At that point, then I have to do a further filter and I have to assess the client's skin and the client's goals. So I can't microblade on all skin types. Therefore, we have to do a further investigation and probing into the type of uh, skin that you have. And I have to give you a realistic expectation as to what you want and what I can deliver and that we can achieve someplace in the middle. So can I microblade on all skin types? Absolutely. However, the healed results will vary depending on the canvas that I'm working on. So if you have minimal pores and you have dry skin or normal skin, the, uh, that's the ideal healed result. But if you have large pores and oily skin, asking for microblading on its own, really what it means is that you will have a softer and less crisp looking healed stroke. And in my opinion, doing microblading on its own is a great first step. Microblading on its own is ideal for somebody who, who is that person who said, oh, I'm such a natural person, I'm such a natural person, I have no eyebrows. Um, and even for clients who come in and they say, I wear a very thick, I wear loads of product every day, and that's what I want every single hour of every day, I want it 24 hours, well then the blade and shade technique is probably best suited to you. Um, our difficulty sometimes is that some clients come in with photographs, finely filtered photographs actually from other artists and say, this is what I want. And then when you closely look at the photographs, you can't even see the pores of the skin. They're so finely filtered. Therefore, I have to then let you down gently and say that photograph is filtered within an inch of its life. These are the realistic expectations so that I can meet your expectations and your goals. Finely filtered photographs. They're the bane of my life. So if you know what to expect in advance, well then between the two of us, we can actually work together. If you are unyielding, um, you invariably will end up with a very disappointing result um, because our skin is an organ. It's a very unpredictable organ at that. I can predict certain outcomes uh, with certain skins and the technique that's used for you. But if you are rigid in what you want, invariably you're going to be end up disappointed. So this is why we do these coffee talks every day and these nuggets of wisdom so that I can educate you on how to be able to achieve your result. And this brings me on nicely to uh, how to prepare you for the healing process when the work is actually done. And if you know in advance how the healing process is going to be for the first, certainly for the first two or three days, well then you're not going to have a freak out. Um, way back in the early days, people used to ring me on day two and say, oh my God, my husband hates it. And he thinks that's the end result. It's not. 
So in the prep uh, for treatment with us, we usually advise you in advance to have the knowledge, know how your skin is going to heal over the next couple of days. Well, at least educate yourself anyway. To be able to say to family when you walk through the door that evening, this is not the end result. This is only one step of a three step process. And today and tomorrow are actually going to be our toughest days. So they're going to be fatter than you might like on, the, on day one. They're also going to be very dark, irrespective as to what color is used. They could even look black. Um, and then the following day, day two, and they, the first two days are your toughest days. Um, they're going to be a bit slimmer because the oedema goes down, but they're also so going to be darker again. Day three to day seven, then they gradually get softer by 30%. Then on week two, they could disappear a bit. And it's not that they've disappeared. They haven't disappeared. The pigment is still there. It's just the new skin that grows over your tattoo is usually thick to start with. And then over the next 21 days after that, that new, new skin gets thinner. So week three, uh, there's more translucency through the skin. So it looks like as if the strokes reappeared again. And week four, um, you will see them better. And that's because the new skin is at its thinnest. So it takes a, tool, a full 30 days to actually heal. So this, the flaking and the outside healing only takes three to four days, but the skin underneath needs a full 30 days. So therefore, and then at that point, then you come back to us and we do the final adjustments. So we uh, discuss with you at that point, do you want to go thicker or do you want to go darker? Um, uh, because the true retention at that point is what the true retention is at that stage. Now, this healing process is totally different for redheads and for blondes. Um, redheads and blondes usually have irritated skin. Um, there can be a bit of a red hue about it as well. Um, it could be a little bit sorer as well. Take the drugs, take the paracetamol, take arnica pillules if you want to or if you have to. And I usually advise the redheads and the blondes that there could be a reddish hue around the uh, tattoo and not to cover it up with pencil um, to get rid of that reddish hue. Do prepare yourself. Wear your big glasses when you go out. Um, the reddish hue is... Uh, as a result of the irritation of your, your skin, your poor little old skin. We used to know this when I was in the delivery suite, the redheads used to always be worried about those and the blondes as well. Um, and the modifier that's in the pigment um, is also has a little bit of an orangey red hue also. And you can, uh, that's all you can see is the redness and you think, oh, oh, oh. So I will tell you that that is a normal process. Um, and you need to be ready that when you get unwelcomed comments from family saying, oh, I don't know about that now, it looks a bit strange to me, that you can actually then say, yes, this is what I have to expect. Yes, this is part of the process. Yes, this is what Olive told me. Yes, this is all normal. Yes, I'm going to trust the process myself. So you just have to sort of sit it out, wait it out. I can't do anything about it anyway. But for reds, redheads and blondes, you will have that ready hue and you'll kind of think, oh my God, she used the wrong color or there's something going wrong or whatever. If it so happens that you know that that is all part of the normal process. And then when you come back to me at step two, um, that whole redness will all have healed properly into your skin. That redness is an orange hue is very necessary to give a lovely end result. So we have to think of the end result. So project yourself to the end result. So my takeaway nugget today is tell your family in advance not to make unwelcomed comments. Tell your family that what you arrive in home the day the work is done is not the end result. In actual fact, the first two days are your toughest two days. Tell them not to make unwelcomed comments because you, you haven't had brows for quite some time. And actually, you could kind of regret that you had it done yourself. So the first two days are the toughest. And if you're prepared for that, everything will be perfect. Um, know that you're going to be a little red know that it's going to be a bit sore so you take the paracetamol know that the healing process that there's going to be an itch um and that bear in mind i've created up to 180 hair strokes in each eyebrow so of course your eyebrows are going to itch that's part of the process but they're not going to scab so if you follow the aftercare as we ask you you're not going to have hideous scabby brows yes they're going to be a bit darker but they're not going to be hideously scabby and you don't have to go into hiding in fact most people go back to work as soon as they've had the work done and in relation to filtered photographs, so usually I ask my clients to bring a photograph of what they see online or off my website or off my Instagram to say, yeah, Olive, this is my ideal brow. And then we discuss it between us. 
more often than not, clients bring in photographs to me of a very heavily powdered brow, which is actually ma a makeup, and they want that done in microblading. So it's a great opportunity for us to be able to discuss between us um, what actually you are looking for and what I can actually deliver with the canvas that I have. So there you go. Um, so filtered photographs. No, 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 no. We don't filter our photographs ever. Um, uh, what I put up online is the real deal. You can see pores, you can see redness, you can see um, the wiping marks, you can see everything. And so we create a very realistic expectation, not a filtered look whereby you're thinking you're going to be Instagram perfect. That's a like a recipe for a total disaster if you're coming in with you know, this unrealistic expectation of what we can and can't deliver. And more often than not, then I would actually say to them, listen, you know, I'm not sure that I'm the person for you because what you're looking for is something that I can't deliver. Um, and yeah, so there you go. So knowledge is power. Right. I am going to have coffee with a very good friend of mine now. And well, as in online coffee. And I'll be ready for work at 11. All right, everybody. I hope you have a lovely, lovely, lovely bank holiday weekend. I have uh, uh, three very, very interesting clients today. I'm just so looking forward to seeing them. So and they're traveling from out of county. And I hope West Cork weather behaves so that we can welcome you with our West Cork open arms. Have a great weekend. Bye.